You know, I've made something of a bad habit on the channel this year out of using my history with a franchise that I care about but haven't often talked about before as a springboard to talk about annoying fandom culture that can get kind of toxic. And, well... This video is going to be coming out on the 3rd, or maybe the 4th, or maybe even the 5th, depending on how lazy, I mean, busy I am this week. So, I figure, what the hell? It's the week of Star Wars Day. Let's tackle the OG of stupid-ass internet discourse. It's kind of hard to know where to start with this one, because Star Wars is so ubiquitous in Western pop culture these days that it doesn't really need a proper introduction, and the same can be said for the online discourse, because nerds talking about Star Wars on the internet was its own medium of online content before I was even born. So, fuck it, you know, let's just do the, uh, the other obvious starting point, my experience with Star Wars. Uh, as you can probably guess, I got into it when I was a kid in the early 2000s, uh, right around the time the hype was starting up for Episode 3 was when I took notice of the franchise, and I kinda just watched them all around the same time, and to me, both the prequels and the original trilogy were Star Wars. I saw it all as the same and generally kind of liked all of it. There was a period when I was really into it, but it was fairly brief, and I wouldn't say I was like a super fan as a kid, because for me, it has always gone back to Transformers and DC Comics at the core, and other things have just kind of occasionally distracted me from that. And of course, when I became a teenager and started venturing on to the internet and discovered the world of online creators who like to talk about things they like, well, I ran into plenty of people making videos about Star Wars. Plenty of people who were a good bit older than me and grew up on the original trilogy and seemingly had a lot more clout and authority than me. And... This also happened to be in a period of time that I like to call my pre-critical thinking skills period, before I really started trying to become a good content creator who develops his own thoughts and opinions on things before even considering what others try to say and also tries to take what they have to say into account, so I was pretty easily swayed into thinking, oh, the prequels and the special editions are outright trash, dog doo-doo, they don't even count as Star Wars, and the original cuts of the original trilogy are the only real Star Wars, because those are the good ones that people way older than me grew up with, and therefore they count more. However, this was also around the same time I started to care about Star Wars less and less during my teenage years. I had tried to keep up with the novels and the Clone Wars animated series, but life just kinda came at me and that stuff seemed less important for a while, so while I was actually developing into a person with critical thinking skills, Star Wars wasn't even really on my mind. It wasn't until Disney bought Lucasfilm that I went, maybe it's time to give all that stuff another look. So, uh, right before The Force Awakens came out, I rewatched both the original trilogy and the prequels and found that my adult opinion was actually pretty similar to my childhood opinion. I like both trilogies equally. I think there's some fun stuff and some dumb stuff and some really smart stuff about every movie. Sure, some are better than others, and some are more my favorites than others, but I don't think amongst that batch of movies, the George Lucas created chunk of Star Wars, there's anything that I would outright say is terrible and I wouldn't recommend checking out for any reason. Like, to give some examples, yeah, I think some of the dialogue and acting in the prequels is pretty stiff, but I also 
really like the design philosophy and aesthetics of a lot of the ships and costumes in those movies. And I think there's some really fun ideas about the greater Star Wars universe introduced there. Conversely, I don't really like the aesthetics of the original trilogy as much as most people. I know that's kind of sacrilege, but... Well, I think, yeah, the Millennium Falcon and the Star Destroyers are pretty cool. There's stuff like all the starfighters that are named after letters of the alphabet, which always looked kind of clunky and dated to me. But the original trilogy also has some of the best characters in the entire franchise. You know, that core triad of Luke Han and Leia are all great, have really fun, dynamic arcs and little moments all throughout those first three movies. And there's even Obi-Wan in A New Hope, who happened to get expanded on a lot in the prequel trilogy, so much so that he's actually my favorite character in the entire franchise, has been since I was a little kid. I was into saying hello there before it was cool. So then when The Force Awakens actually came out, I tried to go and see it with that attitude of, you know, not all Star Wars is the best thing ever, but it's all pretty fun and silly and a good time, and I like it. And that was ultimately my opinion of The Force Awakens. I felt like it was another pretty solid Star Wars movie. I didn't full-on fall in love with it like some people did, but I also didn't think it was a bland, boring New Hope remake like a lot of other people said. However, that did start to change for me a little bit when Rogue One came out, because while I still like that movie, I am definitely in the crowd that doesn't care for the in-your-face and nonsensical amount of fan service in that movie. Like, people love to go to complaining about the Darth Vader bit at the end, and while I don't love it, I think it's okay... The thing that really bothers me is what the heck are the you'll be dead guys doing on a completely different planet hours before they're supposed to be on Tatooine and like less than an hour before that planet gets blowed up. So feeling that way and seeing the growingly negative attitude towards the sequels online did make me pretty trepidatious going into Last Jedi and that movie is something that at the time I saw as far from perfect, but due to many conversations with many people, I have conceded a few points there, and I'm now pretty on in the middle on it, but even then, I don't really want to go into too many details or really even discuss it at all if I can avoid doing so, because talking about that movie became such a toxic nightmare, with so many people releasing multiple hours-long video essays about why it was the best thing or the worst thing ever, and acting like if you weren't on one side or the other of the fence, whatever side they were on, you were the fucking devil, just made me dread ever talking about modern Star Wars for a while, and even now, I'm kind of questioning keeping this part in the video. So while I did skip out on Solo at the time, I ended up seeing Rise of Skywalker in theaters on the pure energy of, it seemed like the vitriolic tribal nature of Star Wars discussion had almost looped back around to being a kind of ironic meme at that point, and I was like, hey, maybe I can ride this wave, but... That was not a fun movie to see or talk about either, because I think we can all agree it's kind of a mess. Like, again, there's good stuff in there, but it really seems like a lot of damage control while also following through on stuff Last Jedi set up. It's, it's a very weird beast, and just watching it kind of burned me out on Star Wars in general for a while, to the point where I didn't even check out Mando for the first, like, season and a half. However, saying that, I don't outright hate the sequels, and I 
don't want to like bash on them outright ever, even though I don't have a lot of desire to go back and rewatch them. And I'm not exactly excited for another movie about Ray because, well, when I was a kid, there were people older than me who only liked the original trilogy, only liked the stuff they grew up with and actively slagged off the new stuff that came out for my generation. And now I'm an adult who kind of feels loathsome towards the sequels. And at the same time, I have a younger cousin who really likes all of Star Wars but got into it through the sequels. And I've had some pretty nice interactions with them about Star Wars. And, you know, I kind of don't want to continue the cycle of tricking somebody into thinking their Star Wars is bad just because I didn't love it. And, I mean, as I've said, it's not like I've completely fallen off Star Wars. I dragged my feet on getting into Mando, but eventually I did jump on the bandwagon during the release of the second season because at the time I was stuck at home with a lingering case of COVID and bored out of my mind. So I said, let's catch up on all the Star Wars content that's happened since I fell off. And I ended up really liking Mando. I think it kind of gets back to the spirit of Star Wars, of just making these fun, pulpy sci-fi stories that have some stupid stuff in them, yes, but are, on the whole, pretty fun and creative and playful. And I know people feel like Mando's kind of fallen off since Season 2, but I basically feel the same way about Season 3 and Book of Boba Fett. Yeah, there's some silly stuff in there, but it's Star Wars. With very rare exceptions, this franchise has never been ultra serious or realistic or down to earth or free of silly stuff that's there to attract general audiences and kids. Like, R2-D2 and C-3PO were meant to be silly characters to get the audience invested in the story. The Ewoks were a bunch of cute, cuddly teddy bears that in actuality were vicious, meat-eating, tribal animals. And then there's stuff like Jar Jar, there's stuff like the clones, there's the silly battle droids, there's the Porgs. All of Star Wars has had silly, goofy bullshit meant to appeal directly to kids and normie parents. So I'm not exactly inclined to get upset about a cute baby version of Yoda or a colorful cyberpunk biker gang. And on top of that, because I've enjoyed the Mandoverse so much, I've also been digging into other Star Wars content that doesn't have a episode number attached to it that I missed. I went back and watched all of the rest of Clone Wars, and while the early seasons are pretty rough, I did like it on the whole. Bad Batch has been a great follow-up to it. So was Rebels. While the first few episodes bored me to tears, I did end up really liking Andor by the end of its run. Solo was a movie that existed. And yeah, I'm gonna fucking say it, I loved Obi-Wan. I thought it was a great story that did justice to the actor, perfectly slotted into the canon, and was just a bit of fun love letter to people like myself who grew up on the prequels thinking of Ewan McGregor's Obi-Wan as their favorite character. And I know that is an extreme amount of bias right there, but guess what? It's my fucking YouTube channel. I'm allowed to be a little fucking biased. And ultimately, though people are always gonna hotly debate whether or not it's as good as the originals, I do think this new era of Disney Plus releasing all kinds of different Star Wars content is pretty good in general because it finally acknowledges what Star Wars has slowly morphed into over the years. As much as some of the old heads really love to think of Star Wars as free classic pieces of cinema and nothing else, 
it's a franchise now. It's the same as Transformers or Power Rangers or the Fast and the Furious. It's a multifaceted, big, sprawling thing. And it's not all always going to fit together or jive with your sensibilities. And guess what? That's okay. Because as I've grown really fond of saying over on my group channel, Modular Media, where we tend to talk about Star Wars quite regularly. So, you know, go over there, like, comment, subscribe, do that here, pledge to the Patreon, engage with the algorithm, blah, blah, blah. We tend to forget in online nerd spaces that you really shouldn't define yourself by one thing in particular. You shouldn't make one franchise what you live and die on as a human being. You should be multifaceted. You should have a lot of different interests and pastimes and hobbies in order to be a well-rounded individual. And if Disney wants to keep wringing out as much money out of Star Wars as possible, they have to appeal to as many different demographics as possible. And the best way to do that is to continue to make all different kinds of Star Wars and releasing them fairly regularly instead of like annually releasing one new Star Wars thing that appeals to the highest common denominator. And you know what? It's okay if you don't like something they release. It's okay if you don't like something George Lucas made. You don't have to like everything in a franchise in order to like the franchise. You know, I know people who only like the Guardians of the Galaxy and don't give a shit about anything else Marvel-wise. They don't even care about the Guardians comics. Doesn't matter. They're still a Marvel fan because they still enjoy that specific series of Marvel movies. If you only like the original trilogy, that's fine. If you only like the prequels, that's fine. If you only like the sequels, that's fine. If you only like the Disney Plus shows, that's fine. If you like some combination or all of it, that's also fine. Because you know what? At the end of the day, all that money goes into the same bucket at Disney HQ. Take it from somebody who wasted basically two years worth of his life on making and remaking a four-hour video on how much he didn't like a particular season of Power Rangers and has mellowed out since. The only thing you're going to do by being bent out of shape by not liking something in your favorite franchise for more than a couple hours after seeing it is damage your own life. There is tons of time I spent making Power Rangers Megaforce Sucks that I could get back. And I recently decided to cancel another This Show Sucks video that I was hoping to make by the end of the year because I realized I was starting to do that again. And that was a toxic cycle that I had gotten myself stuck in. And Star Wars fans are the original toxic fandom cycle of getting hyped up for a new installment or a new era of a thing and then losing their minds over the fact that they didn't love it as much as the one that got them into it originally. And you know what? I think if anybody is going to set the example that the rest of the internet can also break that cycle, it is them. They started it. No, not they. We started it, okay? I'm a Star Wars fan too. I'm counting myself amongst this. We started this problem. We have to start fixing it. I know I've talked about DC and tokusatsu fans having this problem before this, but really, this is where it needs to start. And if you don't believe me, Next Star Wars Day, just try this. Try doing what I do every month when I come out to shoot videos. Touch grass. Get yourself a little bit of perspective. Sure, still like and celebrate and rewatch your favorite installment, but when you're done with that, don't jump down someone else's throat for talking about the thing they like that you don't care about. Come out and engage with the real world and realize it doesn't all have to be about whether Star Wars is perfect or not.
I'm the Vacuuminator, reminding you that you never truly fail until you stop trying. And that's why I'm never going to stop trying to get the attention of fan bases for things I like in order to say, hey, we could probably be doing better here. <sighs> so, happy Star Wars Day, may the 4th be with you, and until next time.